I'm Katrina. And I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. Just chilling in my car. Chilling in the car. <laughs> Here we are. This is the quiet space and this is just real life. And um, we're so passionate about uh, what God has laid on our hearts and about um, just continually pursuing him mm -hmm. and what he's calling us to do and um, bringing that fresh word, but also being responsible and obedient to putting his fresh word in us. Yeah. Oh my word. That's so important. Even, you know, we've been together now for what, 40 minutes before recording, just getting in his presence and worshiping him. And sometimes praying. it's really praying a lot. And sometimes it's hard to break away from that even to record <laughs> because I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just want to be Keep in this going. place. Yeah. yeah. I know. But we're, we're here today to bring you to, um, just a really rich piece of scripture in Hebrews. So we're going to be looking at Hebrews 12. We're going to actually start in verse three and go through verse 11. And, um, for some of you, this could be really convicting. And if it is causing conviction in your heart, that Don't is, turn us off. that is an amazing <laughs> thing. So, um, yeah. And you're going to learn why it's so amazing while we break down each verse. Yes. So let's just go ahead and you do the reading of the verses and then we're just going to touch on one at a time. Gun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So let's actually, let's look at verse three and four because those kind of go okay. together. Yeah. Um, so verse three and four of Hebrews 12 says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Verse four, ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. Now I'm going to be reading out of King James version. So it's going to kind of push some of you. Um, and it's going to look different than other translations, but we're going to break this down. So that bloodshed is the bloodshed persecution, just mm. so you understand. Mm -hmm. um, and consider means to pause. Right. You know, pause. Don't. You, we are so want it now. Quick, 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 quick. Everything's got to be now, my way, now. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that we don't pause. And... Um, and that's huge. You know, that is a very, very um, wise position to take is to pause and praise the Lord and pray um, before you move. And what it's telling you to do is um, pause and, and also another uh, meaning of that word consider is contemplate. So there's many things that we contemplate in our day, in our life, in our year. Um, this is telling us to contemplate or meditate on him, Jesus, they're talking about Jesus here, mm -hmm. that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Contemplate what Jesus went up against. Contemplate the persecution that Christ walked out in his life. Yes. And, and also then how it relates to your present time. Mm -hmm. One of the verses that God brought me to in those, um, in that um, set of scripture was that Galatians 6, 7, and 9, mm -hmm. and it was, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. And then 9 was, let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And, and I think that what happens is that, uh, we get discouraged when it doesn't go our way. Yeah. Or yep. we get discouraged when it doesn't happen quickly or when we have to wait it out and wait it out and wait it out. And we thought mm -hmm. something was going to happen. We thought something was going to come about. And and God is saying his word is sound and stable. Do not mock it. Like what he's called and what he said, just like last days, mm -hmm. what is going to happen is going to happen. He will fulfill his time. He will fulfill it. And so, but isn't that true that like that happens when we are contemplating and meditating on the circumstances versus the life of Christ? Right, right. And we lose sight. We lose sight of the blessing and the promise mm -hmm. being caught up in the circumstances and the right. situation. Mm -hmm. and, and God has just so much beyond circumstances and situations. Right. But he uses those to refine us. Mm -hmm. He uses those to align us. Yeah. So then, do you have anything else on those two verses? Yeah, so the, the portion in verse 3 where it says, Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. That word minds is actually talking about our soul, our breath. And um, those words, wearied and faint, are actually also interpreted as sick 
and relaxed. And I think that that is also really critical because oftentimes we become relaxed in the condition of our faith life. Yeah. We just become comfortable and, and ultimately lukewarm. And um, we, we typically become that way when, again, we aren't meditating on the sacrifice of Jesus. It hasn't pierced our hearts. We're, we're wrapped up in like what Belinda's talking about in the circumstances. And verse 4 um, just wraps us up. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. Have you stood up for Christ in such a way that it caused actual bloodshed? I'm going to venture to say probably not. No. Um, there are many Christians there are who, many have, who have. Yes. yes. That are even right the now martyrs. dying for their yeah. faith in other yeah. in other places of the world. But if you're here in America, I, I pretty much can probably say without much doubt that you probably have not endured such persecution to where there's actual bloodshed. Few. Few. Mm -hmm. And so... So we're, we're sitting here today telling you, um, Christ did, <laughs> yes. Christ went through the, the worst kind of persecution you could go through yet. Um, we kind of pass over it. Like it's just another story. So contemplate, meditate on that, allow that to pierce your heart. Well, and then there's also this amazing thing about the Lord, you know, he, in, uh, first Corinthians ten thirteen, he says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man, but but um, tempted beyond what you are able. Wait, am but I? But God is faithful. Oh, but God is faithful. Um, who will not be allowed? I am not. I'm, who will not allow you to be <laughs> Thank you. with the temptation? Oh, what? I skipped a line too. Gosh, it's your, it's your handwriting. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it okay oh, that's beautiful yeah okay wait i think you should read it one more time <laughs> okay since it just did not go well <laughs> no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it oh that's so powerful worth being repeated yes. that's probably why it got all bumbled up in the very beginning yeah. so don't miss that because what happens is is that you're gonna be tempted mm -hmm. you're gonna um, want to fall into old sin habits there's gonna be people that are gonna um, give you a hard time and um, belittle the walk in which you're taking with Christ yeah. and um, mock they will mock it and and so but the Lord is like hey you know what stay near to me pause in me pay attention to me and I have a way of escape for you I will always create another avenue for you to leave or to go in or to be in and, and his ways brings about the the, the best blessings I know Amen. you know yeah so then Bert, let's move on to verse 5 and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children my son Despise not thou thy, the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Yeah, this one so this one, down. it just one, let me just say, like in my notes I wrote, um, do not despise the chastening of the Lord mm -hmm. or be discouraged when you are rebuked. Mm -hmm. um, and let's read verse six too, because it really does go with verse five. For whom the Lord loveth, he he chastens. I, we 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 say the word different. Yeah. I've always and said whom the Lord loves and and scourge, scourged. Oh, scourges! Yeah. Every son whom he receiveth, which is wow. like wh a whipping. And that, mm. boy, that is like really in, in serious. So, when God he corrects those in whom he loves. Yeah. And there's um. Later, I had written down a verse on that um, because it goes on to talk about later on that we'll get there that um, he doesn't even acknowledge those who are not his sons. They're Ill Ill illegitimate. illegitimate. Yep. And, and yep. so he corrects those in whom he loves. And so that's because he loves you. He doesn't mm -hmm. want you to go that way or because he loves you. He wants you to stop doing the things that have... Um, held you down, restrained you from the glory he has for you or for, for what he wants to manifest in you. And, um, clearly there are people that God wants to manifest a ministry in you and wants to bring about a fresh word through you for mm -hmm. others clearly, because mm -hmm. that's the discipleship of the father. 
Yeah, and you know, Proverbs 3.12 actually really um, reinforces what the Father is saying here. And it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth chasten <laughs> him early morning promptly <laughs> promptly and and so um you know we've all witnessed children that are completely undisciplined yeah where the parents are just sort of off in their own world and they're not really paying attention and letting their kids sort of go wayward and things get broken there's a lot of disrespect chaos yeah. disorder um so you know what god is saying here is um, he cares about us so much that he's willing to step in and redirect and convict our hearts and bring about a shift and a change because he wants to see us walk out the fullness of the purpose that he has called um, called on our lives. Because if we don't, mm -hmm. it's going to impact us for the rest of eternity. Yeah, and I had written on the side of my notes, God will, God's will for us is to learn obedience, but we have to really learn how to submit while we're in it right it brings recognize up, it recognize it and obedience is the fruitfulness of um his love within us like when you trust him beyond your circumstances when you trust him to do the uncomfortable thing when you trust him to step out and speak up for him mm -hmm. it brings about great fruitfulness mm -hmm. amen and then as we move down into verse 7 and 8, it says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasten not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all, of, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So <laughs> 7 and 8, is those are also really you know, heavy verses. So if you endure, yes. which is what you were just talking about, yes. full submission to it, understanding what it is, recognizing what is happening, um, then he is going to deal with you as he would his son. Um, and if he isn't dealing with you as a son, then is he even your father is basically what verse seven yeah. is saying there. And haven't you ever, I mean, I know we shouldn't compare, but I do think that sometimes um, I have seen this in myself at times, but also I've seen this in others where they're really frustrated that a non-believer's life seems so abundantly rich of this world. Like they have all that that, their true. things, they have everything they want. They, they go on many vacations. They, they have everything that, and that's not to say that a believer can't have all those things because I really believe God is fruitful in the lives of all. But what I am saying is that, um, sometimes he separates us from that and creates such a strong division because he doesn't want that to become an idol in your life and you worship the trip or the job or the position or your identity through what others think of you or what you've done. Yeah, and, and we actually touch on that in Psalm 37, the video that we did a couple oh, weeks yeah. ago, Psalm mm -hmm. 37. Um, but also, I think it's important to um, stop, pause, and go, okay, what is a blessing? What actually is a blessing? Because sometimes I think we look at other people and we think that they're blessed, but are they blessed? Or are they being distracted? Are they not? But that's the, the greatest way to, um, to identify that is what is eternal and what is not. Right. So if you look at blessings but that- But God can bless people Oh, with he things rich, of this world for sure that are walking in Christ. One hundred percent true. I just want to make sure that people realize that we're true. not saying if you're wealthy that you're not saved or. But like the whole thing about crumbs is that little is enough. Yeah. And and little is enough throughout the whole scripture. I mean, he came to serve. Right. He he did not. He could have. He didn't have a throne on this earth. Mm -mm. He no. was crucified. Yeah. So perspective. Perspective is key. Perspective mm -hmm. is key. And then that, you know, that verse um, where it talks about if you're without the chastening of the Lord, it, basically what that verse is telling us is if you don't have conviction, like if you're living in sin right now and there is no conviction in your heart about what you're doing or the behaviors that mm -hmm. are going on. And, and I've been in situations where I've been 
so convicted of what's going mm -hmm. on in a place and looked around and it's like everybody has just got a blindfold on and earmuffs on and there's no conviction whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. saying like, if you don't have that conviction, if you're not feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit, then you're like, bastards mm -hmm. you have no because father. there's well you have no respect for the father there's no reverence there there's which no reverence there's no discipline yeah yeah and and i do believe like and not exposing my age but um <laughs> even from if i was to turn on a television right now to when i was growing up and turn on a television it is night and day if oh i was gosh. to go to a movie we're not the same even, age and if, i would say the same thing if i was to go to even a pg movie yeah what is accepted and what is okay is not okay like it does not yeah. line up with scripture which is sure. which is watered down um being aligned with the father and and in that and not a good watering down like it's totally like diminished the power and authority of the Lord yeah because it lessens it may it's trying to justify sin in everyone's life yep. it's trying to yep. make it all okay and it's not okay it's the very thing that traps you holds you back and keeps you from his fullness and enjoying the excitement of him and hearing him most televisions um, advertisements and movies take sin and make it just a laughing matter yeah they just laugh at it yeah and then there and then our kids movies are obviously turning it. totally demonic and yeah yeah that's a whole we could do a whole we should do a short video on that Ugh. it's just incredible so um, be mindful of a, does it align with scripture does it align with his word if there's even a nudge within your spirit you should check it out you should make sure because he wants yeah. to bring correction because that's what he says in mm -hmm. whom he loves he corrects and and one of the things I wrote in big letters on the top of my notes his protection is in his correction yeah oh my gosh that is so true just as our own parents um, correct corrected us as children or told us not to do something to protect us and to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to read verses 9 through 11. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Mm -hmm. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present, seems to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby so number nine you really um touched on like our our own parents they they corrected us mm -hmm. and we showed them respect mm -hmm. how much more respect should we give to our father in heaven because mm -hmm. he's doing it for eternal life yeah this is a life or death situation is what that verse is mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. And then right to the very end, he talks about what it brings about. And I think in the day and age when I, not the, everything I hear is people feel like their peace is robbed. You know, they're depressed, they're anxious, they can't sleep, they're overwhelmed, um, they're living in fear of whatever. Um, in pursuing Christ, in allowing him to bring correction into your life, in all of that it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness mm -hmm. within you because he went that's how he trains us that's how he brings us about and and i love that because one of the things i wrote down at the bottom i wrote um, galatians 5 22 through 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control and against such there is no law yeah in all of that, in the correction, in the in the redirection from the correction, mm -hmm. he you will have peace. And if you are longing for peace, let the Father bring the correction into your life. Mm -hmm. Let the Father do what he wants to do in you and through you, and you will have peace. It mm -hmm. may not be it may not be easy and you may not be comfortable, but you will have peace. Yeah. And let go of the expectations of what you think your reality should look like. Because in yeah. doing that, you're literally surrender surrendering to his control. You're allowing him to direct you and you'll be able to walk out this path of righteousness that mm -hmm. the scripture so beautifully lays out.
yeah so with our fumbling throughout this uh <laughs> yeah. this segment a couple fumbles. That's okay. um you know it just is about being real yeah. and and let god correct you and let god meet you and and yeah. love on you yeah. love on you through his correction because it has protection yeah and peace Thank you for hanging with us uh, these last 20 minutes, and we cannot wait to meet you at the master's table. God bless your day.